Today I'm going to be building a new refrigeration system. Um, this one is, uh, it still does work pretty well. Uh, even with this fan and radiator running, um, it could still cool this antifreeze down below minus 10. Um, but as you can see, um, it has been falling apart. I'm just going to make a new one and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. A new one will use water filter housings to house the condenser and evaporators. And I've used a bigger compressor too. And I'm going to make a, um, a new evaporator out of this tube. And instead of pillory tube, I'll probably be using a needle valve as the metering device. So it's just the standard water filter housing. They've got quarter BSP in and out ports. Um, I just got four of these from Pipe More. This is six mil copper tubing, six mil meter, and this is four in here, which um, came off an experimental system. And I've got a brand new filter dryer too. Um, that's very important. The compressor that you use is it's not too critical, um, but um, just use whatever you've got for the refrigerant you have. I'm actually using R290, which is propane, but it works okay in R134A compressors. This is an R600A compressor on my old system, and I'm actually running propane instead, and it works brilliantly. The compressor doesn't overheat. Um, even when it is moving quite a bit of heat, um, the discharge temperature does uh, get um, really nice and warm but it doesn't seem to be bothered by it at all. It works really quite well. This is my most powerful refrigeration compressor, three quarters of a horsepower. I cannot use it though because to get ideal performance out of it you're really going to need an evaporator which uses 8mm copper tubing. Um, and a condenser using 6mm copper tubing and that's going to involve buying a lot more plus this compressor needs to be fan cooled too so it's not really suitable also um, I will be needing or you, if you're doing this you are going to need refrigeration hoses probably gauges as well but I'd get away without them um, and you'll need a uh, propane um, Preferably with the McCaptain removed, and I've got another video showing you how I did that. Um, and you also will need a vacuum pump, but you can make them with well, one of those are just two refrigeration compressors um, just linked together uh, with the suction of one going to the discharge of the other, um, and then you connect your uh, hose up to that. But if you don't have any spare compressors, just buy a vacuum pump. Um, I got all these for free. At this stage I'm not sure how I'm going to mount um, them onto the board because I'll be assembling this all onto a wooden board. Um, I've got M5 bolts here. Um, I was thinking I could put them in and then drill through the bottom of the board and have um, this sticking up through upside down. And then I'll use a lock nut on the other side um, and it would be raised off and my refrigerant lines will be drilled through there and it will be sealed somehow. Um, the only I should do in that is if the refrigerant lines do leak slightly it's going to drip everywhere. So, But then the issue with having them upright is there's no real, really any easy sort of way to secure them down. Um, I'll need to use some sort of long cable ties maybe, but at least if anything leaks it's not going to sort of um, drip everywhere um, when the system isn't running. So the best way to make your coils up is just straighten out the tube along the ground and then, well this is a um, steel pipe here which I'll wind it round. Um, Try and find out its outer diameter for you just now. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure, I can't seem to find it in my ruler tape measure, but it's just standard scaffolding tube anyway. Um, 
but what you need to, this is what I wound it round, but just any tube that's going to permit the finished coil to fit inside a water filter housing, that's what you need to do. So I'll start by getting a good tail length, um, this will do I think, then what you do is you put that down inside. And then you'll bend it round and begin winding. So getting it started can be quite difficult, but um, you need to just get it round as it start winding it onto the tube. Um, just try not to kink the copper. Here's my progress so far, and what I've been doing is uh, holding the tube here in my left hand and just twisting the whole thing round with my right hand and guiding it on. Um, you'd be kind of surprised at how far it doesn't go. Um, this whole thing is going to have used 5 metres of tube. So, and here is a completed evaporator. I think I left a little bit too much extra, but um, you can always cut it off and use it for other things. That's fitting in there rather nicely. So the next thing we need to do is uh, clean any fragments of metal or other contaminants out of the tube and I'm going to blast it with carbon dioxide. Oh, I'm just going to fly right out. Yeah. Uh, I'll hold it in with my hand and give it a better blast but um, you get the idea. Um, it's just to get everything out and carbon dioxide is very high pressure. Well, it worked and I ended up getting dry ice on my hand and uh, just got blasted right off, but it's clean now. And that got knocked over. Now we need to do is straighten up our tubes and make sure the ends are as smooth and clean as possible because we're going to drill holes in the top there and uh, push the tubes through. And if they're rough, then I'm going to rough up the inside of the hole and possibly allow it to leak. There we go, um, I might put a bit of uh, araldite, which is just um, two-part epoxy on there to seal it. I'm also going to need uh, a tube going down the middle, um, so I'm going to need something that will come out of there and go right down to the bottom um, on on both containers. Uh, because the water isn't going to circulate very well just uh, through there, so I'll see what I've got. So I found that 15mm copper tubing with a stop end on it fits nicely. I'll just have to solder that together and drill out the end. There we go, and that fits super snugly down the middle. What I also did was uh, stretch the coil out a bit so there's more space in between the turns so that it can absorb heat a bit more efficiently. So here's where I'm up to, they're both built. Um, evaporator here, condenser here, um, it's going to be very compact. Okay, so now it's time to begin soldering. Uh, <coughs> I'm just using soft solder because it's all I've got. Um, it does work fine, I've never had any problems, but it's uh, not recommended. So now we've got a um, under vacuum, uh, it looks a bit stupid, but no, it's a capillary tube. Uh, um, it's going to be replaced with uh, a needle valve soon. And as you can see, the refrigerant is still coming out. So the capillary tube I've got on it just now is 1.03 meters of 0.9 millimeter. But that will be getting replaced um, of a decent quality needle valve. Um, this is what I was using as a needle valve, but as you can see, it's just a cheap Chinese one, and the refrigerant refrigerant was uh, very slowly leaking out through the seat. So I got a sixty thousand psi rated one off eBay for ten pounds. Um, as a Bootech one. 
I'm going to leave this to sit for half an hour like this. It's a good thing to have this compressor running, um, the one in the refrigeration system, while we are doing the vacuuming because it stirs up the oil and gets rid of any refrigerant that's absorbed in the oil and uh, the moisture too. Because when I turned this one on, a lot more starts coming out of here. So it's been under vacuum for quite some time now. Um, I'm just turning on the water pump. Right then, so that's the uh, condenser, it's been cooled, I've not got anything flowing through the evaporator, so we'll turn off the pumps and let in some refrigerant. Yeah, I'm just letting this in and out. I'm actually just going to let it in until we get a positive pressure and I'll just take this hose off because it's filling up this compressor too and it's just a bit wasteful. There we go. Right, and now to just put in some refrigerant. part usually does take a while. Now that's getting cold. That well, seems to be doing rather well. Um, I'll, try, I'll keep putting the fridge in it until I'm sort of getting it freezing up about here as well. This side is not that cold. As expected, it is leaking a little bit. And there we go, it's freezing up right to the compressor now. Um because it's under no load obviously, but um once it's moving some heat that won't happen. I've now given it some work to do and it's at about nine degrees. I've just switched it on just now. And uh, nine degrees Celsius. Um and yeah it seems to be doing alright. Yeah, I've been uh, putting more and more refrigerant in it and uh, temperature has dropped quite well. You can actually see the temperature going down quite slowly but it sure is at least a litre of the stuff there. Yeah, I'd say that's doing brilliantly. Still dropping yet. Uh, 
Um, and that's it. Ah, zero. This is actually antifreeze, so it won't freeze, I don't think. Minus one. Let's see how long it takes to get to minus two. Two now. I'll just leave it there just now and see how cold it actually does finish up. And finally, we're now below minus 10. Um, so it's okay. Funny thing is, my old one seems, seems to have been able to lower the temperature quicker. Um, but I think the reason is because I've designed this with a lower evaporator temperature um, and my other one is running a higher evaporator temperature I think so that's why it can't chill as cold but I think it can move more heat um, so once I get my needle valve um, I'll basically be able to um, set it to any temperature and this is it um, sort of in its final form. I've got a little radiator on here blowing really really cold air. In fact it's getting so cold there's ice on it. Um, yeah so the antifreeze is like it's well sub-zero anyway because the liquid line back to the compressor is freezing up. Um, this is getting quite warm. I've not got any cooling on it just now but I'm just testing it. What I will do is I'll get a bigger heat exchanger. Well, I'll get a bigger one for the cold side. I'll put this on it, and um, that'll make a good air conditioner. And for the hot side, it'll probably just be a big bucket of water sitting outside. <laughs> 